Ah, uh, yes, we're back with another edition of the show that loves to feature those less thought of, those teams that are usually on the road, not given much of a chance to come close, much less win. We're all about the underdogs on Three Dog Thursday. I'm the somewhat capable host, TJ Reeves. He is my special guest for this week. I love the insight of different people that we're utilizing here on Winning Cures Everything's platforms. Uh, Mike Grace of the Press Box Radio Show. Uh, I, I love Mike's insight on all things, but in particular, college football. If we're talking college football, as we are specifically on Three Dog Thursday this season, for this show mike good to have you thank for thank you for hanging out with me you're gonna serve in large part as my conscience here and i love yep. you for that as i try to go over some of these spreads and where are the likely underdogs how are you my friend well i'm wonderful and again i'm considering this invitation which thank you by the way as a master class <laughs> in, in, in what you do here because I, i'm the guy that always leads with the heart tj yeah my, my heart leads my brain way too much which means my wallet suffers yeah of it. and that so, and you know and that's a lot of people they bet yeah, with their yeah. heart they bet yeah. with their allegiance and then they don't have any money left to bet we know how so, that goes and I'm, I'm certainly not in the category uh of somebody that's an expert by any means now last week on this very program uh one one and one thank you very much to byu for the outright win that we talked about on this show back last week against Cincinnati at home. They are now 20 and two in their last 22 games straight up at home. So when wow. I was getting points, Mike Grace in Provo, it's like, that's easy. Just take yep. them to win, take them on the money line, take them to win. And they got that done. Uh, we did not get it done with Florida. Mike, more on that in a moment, because we're going to talk wow. about Kentucky and Georgia. What was that from the Gators? Florida literally ran right over them, right through them for four quarters. Uh, I'm sorry, Kentucky ran right over Florida for four quarters in Lexington last week. So that was a downer. And then we had a push, the push with Louisiana and Minnesota. Louisiana winning early, winning by a touchdown late in the first half. But Minnesota eventually got to the 11-point number covered uh, in some places. But we had them as uh, as an 11-point favorite so Louisiana, the Ray John K. Johns did not cover. It was oh, a push. So, so one, close. one, and one from the host last week on the show. So again, Mike is not so much into the handicapping, but he said when I contacted him about filling in here uh, on the program, on the video show, and on the podcast, I'm all about telling you, hey, yeah, I like, yeah. thumbs up, or no, hold the nose, stay away from that pooch, stay away <laughs> from that hound. So we're down with this. Um, and so just by and large, we're going to have a lot of fun talking, Mike, Red River rivalry, Oklahoma, Texas. We're going to have a lot of yeah. fun talking about that Kentucky-Georgia game. We got Alabama at Texas A&M. No Johnny Manziel sighting, no. but Texas a and is good. I mean, just in general terms, fascinating Saturday, including Louisville undefeated along with Notre Dame uh, coming up in this matchup on Saturday. A lot of fascinating games right now. An unbeaten Maryland team, but going up against the ranked Ohio State team. Yes, and interesting, that's the big noon game on Fox, which could be the big bludgeoning game because Maryland is stepping up in weight class big time for that one. And we know the the Buckeyes, the love-hate factor for Ohio State. What did you make, just real quick, Mike Grace, of Ryan Day going all WWF uh, or in our, our world, uh, world championship wrestling back in the day promo on Lou Holtz and on any of his haters or doubters? What do you What do you make of that? Is it good? Is it good for the game to spice it up a little bit? What say look, you? I think his players love it. You know, I, I look at it and say, uh, you know, come on, pick on somebody your own size. I mean, we're talking about Lou Holtz here, right? But, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking Ryan Day's players love it, man. He's he's you know he's stepping out there and showing them energy and showing them passion, and that's exactly what he's asking from them. So I I, I see where he's doing going with it, yeah. And the Buckeyes, obviously, ultra-talented, and what a win for them at oh, Notre yeah. Dame, and obviously what's looming later in the year with Penn State and Michigan. We know that every year, so we look forward to that. Anyway, by the way, I didn't do this at the beginning of the show. Thank you for finding us however you did so on a social media link. We're on the Winning Cures Everything platform of shows on their YouTube page, their Twitch, uh, any other platform there, winningcureseverything.com. My man Gary Seegers is all behind it. Um, and again, Gary and his wife, Mike, I keep saying this to all the guests that come on here, have just had their uh, second child and little Murphy Jean 
is uh, now three weeks old on the planet for three college football weeks. So Gary's sleep pattern, as you remember, Mike, is all screwed up. Oh. Trying to get everything done for the college football week, as well as the nine to five job, as well as taking care of mama. Uh, they got the mother-in-law in town some of the time. So he's not able to get here with me and pick underdogs. But thank you to Gary for everything he's doing with the Winning Cures Everything platform. Uh, my man's trying to get into viewing some college football as well on Saturdays. And again, if you are seeing us, realize that we're in podcast form as well. Wherever you get podcasts, Apple, Spreaker, Spotify, Google, Three Dog Thursday, the podcast. Take us with you in the AirPods, the earbuds, wherever you want to go on the device, on the phone with the podcast. If you're only hearing us on the podcast, see what the Mike Grace oh, looks God. like from the press box on the Winning Cures Everything platforms and the Winning Cures YouTube page. You know what my ugly balding mug looks like, but <laughs> in any event, come see what we look like uh, as well. So the host is going to come up with three underdogs. You are here as my conscience. Okay. Shall we go Red River rivalry first, which is Oklahoma and Texas? First, point blank to you, how big of a rivalry do you believe this one is on the Richter scale of like an Alabama-Auburn, now we're talking in the South, yeah. Duke Carolina basketball, Michigan-Ohio State, for the Big Ten, Th this one in that part of the world's a big deal. Does it register for you the same way, Mike Grace? I, I think so. And again, I'm an old school guy. Remember, I grew up in the days when we got one Saturday afternoon. That's right. Podcast, and a lot of times it was Texas, Oklahoma. That's so, right. Uh, so, I, yeah, I still believe in this. I, I know the Oklahoma program has been down for a while since Bob Stoops was there. Um, Texas is on the way back with Sark. But, yeah, I think it still resonates. And part of it is because of what we love about this game, the college game, and that is the fandom and the fan bases that do not like one another mm. and, and will never like one another. And that makes for the rivalry. Same way with Auburn, Alabama. I'm a Mississippi State Ole Miss guy. The Egg Bowl. The Egg yeah, Bowl, exactly. brother. So, so yeah, I th I'm, I'm still all about the Red River rivalry, man. I think that's what makes college football great. And I hope all the changes we're going through doesn't change that part of it, TJ. I think we're okay there. But uh, that, that's what we all love, man, is that. that well, and, and you bring up a great point because they've been in the Big 12. They previously were in different conferences. People have to remember uh, and, and realize that Oklahoma was in the Big 8 many years ago when you're talking about this and Texas in the old Southwest conference, right? They then have been in the big 12 together forever. Now this will become an sec game in the future, a Southeastern conference game. But for now it's the last time as a big 12 matchup. So let's get into this for three dog Thursday purposes. I'm going to lay this out there and tell me what you think. Oklahoma, very interesting. Uh, they have looked good, uh, including in their most recent couple of Big 12 outings. They did beat Iowa State uh, last week. Sooners, by the way, Mike Grace, are one of only four Division One or FBS programs that are 5-0 and oh against the spread. They are 5-for-5 five five covering the numbers so far this year. Uh, the other ones being, I think I lost one of them, Penn State is one, UNLV is another, and I'll come up with what the third one is. Oklahoma is one of the four that are 5-0 and ATS. Texas is 3-2 and two against the number. They did have the upset win over Alabama yep. in Tuscaloosa. Uh, we know Steve Sarkeesian has got the offense rolling along uh, here. Interesting revenge factor. What do you make of Texas hanging a 49 spot on Oklahoma in this game last year? Absolutely humiliating them. A lot of these players are the same players for both teams. Do you buy into a potential revenge factor for that reason for Oklahoma in this matchup? What do you think? You think Brett Venables is preaching that to his to his team this week? Mm. Yeah, I, I think he is. I think he is because, as you said, a lot of these same players are back for a second time. Uh, look, Brett Venables was on the hot seat coming into the season, and it's off to a great start for him. Uh, the defense is what he's always been known for. So, yeah, the 49 points is is not something that that, that he takes lightly. So, uh, you know, well, what's the number on this? What, what, what are you talking about here? We're looking at six. We're looking at five and a half, something like that uh, for the matchup. Oklahoma, again, has been very good in this game. There have been a lot of wild high-scoring games. The, last, yeah, the yeah. last previous two games in 2021 and in 2020 were absolutely crazy games in the high 40s, low 50s. I don't know if that we're going to have that kind of game uh, for Venables with the way you can coach defense, Dylan Gabriel at quarterback. Uh, by the way, I came up with the other team. It's Oregon. It's Oregon. It's Penn State, Oklahoma, and UNLV. UNLV, that's 5-0 and wow. against the spread in the first five games. So something just says to me Sooners, and maybe outright, uh, and Mike, I've had the privilege of being at this game one time 
And it's a hellacious story that I won't spend 30 minutes on, but it involved <laughs> being at the game for Barry Switzer, the legendary Oklahoma uh, football coach and my broadcast partner with Sirius XM. That's how I got the invite. Barry Switzer's wow. 70th surprise birthday party. I was there on the Friday night before the Oklahoma-Texas game. And let me tell you this to the audience and to Mike that's watching us on the Winning Cures Everything platforms and also hearing us on the podcast. I'm standing at a surprise birthday party that has the likes of Jerry Jones, the Dallas Cowboys billionaire <laughs> owner, that has Toby Keith, the legendary wow. uh, country music superstar, that has Barry's former players like Little Joe Washington, um, uh, Keith Jackson, the former tight end, oh, not yeah. the broadcaster. I'm standing around going, who doesn't belong at this surprise party the night before <laughs> Texas, Oklahoma? That is some scene in the Cotton Bowl, half the stadium burnt orange, half yeah. the stadium crimson red. I just think one more time, do you, I'm using you as my conscience on Three Dog Thursday. Do you want to steer me away that Oklahoma doesn't have as much talent, maybe as much swagger as what Texas has coming into this game off the Alabama win? Uh, Longhorns have been able to run the football as well. I like the Sooners and the Six. One last chance to talk me out of it for Three Dog Thursday. You going to do let, that or no? Let me ask you this. What, what do you what What do we know about Texas from them going on the road and beating this Bama team in Tuscaloosa? How much does that tell us about Bama? How much does it tell us about this Texas club? And it and it was an impressive second half. Quinn Ewers is obviously yeah. uh, grown up and developed. Uh, Jonathan Brooks running the football. And again, they validated the Alabama win. They were kind of whole home with Wyoming, but Wyoming's pretty good. That's Wyoming's only loss, 31-10. Yeah. They blast Baylor 38-0, and boy, did they pull away uh, with a with a big pick six, and they ran it all over Kansas last week at home. So I'm not saying Texas is not good. I just think the mojo of the rivalry here, this is going to be OU. I'm going to make Barry Switzer happy. He is now 86 years young Amazing. this week. Barry Switzer coaching in that rivalry for so many years. I say Boomer Sooner as underdog number one for Three Dog Thursday purposes. All right, now I am torn here mm -hmm. for a moment, Mike Grace on the program because I've got a couple of SEC games that I'm waffling back and forth on. The first one is the showdown in College Station. That is oh. Texas A&M hosting Alabama, who we have already uh, been discussing here on the program. Uh, that one coming up at 3.30 Eastern Time, 2.30 Central Time, local time on CBS all over the country. Texas has had to go to the backup quarterback, Max Johnson, the uh, son of Super Bowl winning quarterback Brad Johnson. Also, Max's brother is playing on the team as a tight end. We got Johnson and Johnson as That's the right, connection yeah. for the Aggies. We got Alabama with Jalen Mil Milrow, who, by the way, is a Texas kid, dual threat right, quarterback. Texas. Right. Tide, Tide obviously has found themselves, has found their footing now the last couple of weeks after the Texas loss. Any thoughts here on AM as a short favorite, like a two or a one and a half point favorite at home? home doggy situation for the Aggies and Jimbo Fisher. Any thought, Mike Grace? I'm not ready to give up on, on, on grandpa Nick. I know he's a different Nick Saban than what we've been used to in recent years. I, I you know, I'm a big fan of the talk to the bottle, Nick Saban. Remember that guy? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of that. I, I don't, I still, I, I just, I'm, you mentioned Jalen Milrow going back home, Katy, Texas, what 80 miles from college station. Right. You know, he wants to do well. And I think, I think Saban and his staff have figured things out now to where they can rely on defense, they can run the football, they can, and we saw a little bit of this, bit of this last week in Starkville where they had more design runs for Jalen Milrow. Right. Slowly, surely, I think Tommy Reese is tweaking this offense to fit the, the, the personnel he's got. And again, I'm I'm not ready to give up on Bama just yet, man. And I, I still have my concerns when I look at AM, I look at what Miami put on them from a from a from a scoring point. Um, I, I understand Kyle Field's going to be wild and crazy, yes. but but give me give me give me Grandpa Nick and and the Tide. I, I'm All just right, so stay away yet. from the doggy here on A and M. And again, they were very impressive in the early start against Arkansas. I know our colleague Jason Powers, who is on with you on the press yep. box show as we talk with Mike Grace here. Jason was on Arkansas last week on Three Dog Thursday here, trying to call the Hogs for the game at Jerry's World. Speaking of Jerry Jones at AT and T Stadium, and Texas A and M was just better than them throughout hey. the game. Uh, they they stopped the run. They 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 got a couple of turnovers. They were better last week, and now they're at home. They're going to be jacked up. But Mike is saying eh eh on that one earlier uh, in the afternoon for Three Dog Thursday purposes. Uh, okay, so if we're not as big on the Aggies on Giggum. 
Let's yeah. turn our attention to a primetime game in Athens. And again, you're in the Atlanta area hosting the Press Box show. Yes. The dogs are number one by far, mm-hmm. but man, mm-hmm. they've been bad ATS for three dog Thursday purposes. They haven't they they haven't covered all year. They have one say- push. They have one push. And now the last three weeks, I mean, last week at Auburn, they struggled just to win that game. Now they're laying 14 and a half or 15 with Kentucky prime time at home. All right. I was on the opposite side against Kentucky last week with the Florida Gators. Mike Grace, give me a thought on this line. Is it too many points here for a Georgia team that's not been covering? I think it is. I, you, when you were going through the, 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 the teams that have gone five and oh, the yeah. first thing that came to mind is I know of one that went 0 and 5 so far. And, <laughs> and that is the, the defending two time defending national champs in Georgia. I like Georgia to win the game, but that's just way too many points. This Georgia team is, or pardon me, this Kentucky team is for real. They play Mark Stoop style offense and defense for that matter. They're great up front on the offensive line. Ray Davies won't go off for Davis won't go off for what he did last week with 280 yards, but he'll run the ball. Devin Leary's got to have a better game. There's no doubt about that. He was, what, 9 of 9 for 69 yards or something like that that last week. He's got to be better than that for Kentucky, but I think it's too many points. You look, Georgia's trailed by double digits twice in their, their two SEC contests, but have come back to win them both. Wouldn't surprise me again if we see that on Saturday in Athens. I like the points, but but Georgia to win outright. Yeah, and, and again, uh, you mentioned Davis had all that success against Florida that just for whatever reason – uh, couldn't figure out the zone read blocking scheme of Kentucky. Georgia will be ready for that. So Kentucky may have to throw it a little bit more. And I know yep. we're salivating. The NFL scouts are salivating over this. Brent Bowers, the tight end. He was enormous <laughs> in the Auburn game last week. What's the buzz? You're in and around Atlanta. You you talk to the SEC uh, media people all the time on the press box. Ba- Bowers may legitimately be like a top 15 NFL pick as a tight end. I don't know that he goes that high, but he probably goes in the first round. And uh, he's going to be a load for anybody, including the Wildcats, coming Saturday night. And why shouldn't the guy be in the Heisman Trophy talk? Look, it, it's it's only because he doesn't get the same touches that these uh, the quarterbacks do, et cetera, et cetera. But every time he touches the football, man, he is a game changer. He is a bull to tackle. Uh, I mean, again, it, it took Carson Beck to get the ball to him last week. But when he did, there was nobody tackling Brock Bowers last week. And he's just a special guy for for Georgia. And that's why I think, again, they'll figure out a way to win this game. Kirby's got the personnel to win, but that's too many points in my book for a Georgia team that's still, still working to find that championship caliber of mentality this year. I'm with you. So I'm going there. Doggy number two will be the Kentucky Wildcats. Again, I was on the opposite side last week. I loved Florida in the spot early in Lexington. Didn't work out. Gators got bludgeoned. Now this is a night game at Sanford Stadium. Turn it up a notch or two. Did you have a final thought on this as well? Well, I just think again. I you know I just think I trust uh, Mark Stoops uh, more than than Billy Napier. Uh, how about that? So yeah. uh, and and Kirby Smart more than Billy Napier too. So I just I think this uh, Kentucky team will will play with with Georgia, but Georgia will pull it out in the end. And the culture has changed. The expectation, the defense. What Stoops is built there? Yeah. I mean, this is this is about four or five years running that are that are arguably the best four or five year stretch they've ever had in football. Now let's see. Now we say all this and watch Georgia beat them fifty two to seven, but I don't think that's the case unless Kentucky is just awful, like they turn it over a bunch and uh, and and it's an avalanche. I just I see this being within the two touchdowns that you're getting here for three dog Thursday purposes. I so. think so too. As I say, I think Georgia is really really good, but this. The, don't, don't overlook the Kentucky team. They're good enough to stay with this Georgia club, at least for the bulk of the game, I think. All right, we'll find out. Voice of Mike Grace with me here. If you're only hearing us on the Three Dog Thursday podcast, come find us on the winningcureseverything.com, a platform of shows, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, wherever, Winning Cures Everything. Again, Gary Seegers does a great job with this platform, all dedicated to college football. Mike Gracious to be with me here as serving as my guide, serving <laughs> as my Sherpa up the Himalayas here on picking college football underdogs. So that's two officially. One more for me, and we're going to look strongly at Notre Dame and Louisville. Very interesting matchup. Uh, Notre Dame, such a polarizing team, had problems Saturday night, primetime game in Durham with Duke. They got the last second drive, the last minute drive, uh, and Estime, the running back, put it away. It looked like it might come down to a field goal, but Estime took the the handoff, busted through the middle, 
And not only does Notre Dame get the win, but that breaks the heart of everybody that had Duke at either plus five or plus five and a half. Goodbye on the touchdown uh, from Notre Dame. So now Notre Dame uh, with one loss at Louisville, five and oh. Now you can look at the Louisville schedule and say, eh, a little bit on the Louisville (laughs) schedule. They are going to be fired up uh, in uh, in Louisville here. Uh, Cardinal Stadium, the former Papa John Stadium. Don't call it that anymore. That's right. All right. Any any stadium. thoughts on Notre Dame and the Ville? This is a Saturday night uh, primetime game again here with uh, Notre Dame in this instance laying a few points as the again Louisville being the home underdog. Just a uh, a brief home underdog spread here for them. Any thoughts here on Notre Dame at Louisville what's, for a final and, underdog for me? And what's the number we're talking about? I'm double checking here because I saw. Um, earlier, uh, what that was, that it was five. It is now six, six, I believe is the, and actually I see a six and a half. So we'll go with that. I'm getting, I'm getting six and a half. I'm getting the hook here with Louisville at home. Again, they only won 13, 10 with NC state last week, defensive slugfest. Remember on the opening weekend, Labor Day weekend, they were down a couple of touchdowns at Georgia tech. You're right there in Atlanta, Mike Grace. They're not very good. Louisville had to roar back to beat them. So I'm getting six and a half at home again. It's in that it's in that dangerous area where Duke was last week, five, five and a half points. Notre Dame on the road for back-to-back straight weeks. Hostile environment at Louisville. I just realized I'm backing two teams from the state of Kentucky if I yeah, go with yeah. this. Thought no. on this? Thought on Notre Dame? Yeah, I, I don't think so. I I I'm I'm I like like the Irish. I do. I think they've been tested by certainly by better competition than 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 that uh, Louisville team. So I, I just don't know what I know about Louisville yet. Who have they played? What do they really have from a personnel standpoint? I know what Notre Dame's got. They've got Sam Hartwell, at quarterback, and he'll be just fine. Thank you. Um, I, I like Notre Dame. I don't think the number's enticing enough, TJ. Yeah, and again, uh, for Louisville, Jeff Brom, the new coach, yeah. uh, they they are fired up. I think they're 5-0 and for like only the fourth time in program history uh, getting off to this start. Uh, and we'll see what Jack Plummer can do at quarterback with Notre Dame. Whenever Notre Dame comes in, it's going to be a live atmosphere for sure. Again, ABC will show it all over the country. So Mike is giving me the stay away signals here so. on Three Dog Thursday on the video show. Uh, and again, if you had a uh, Duke last week, you got your heart broken uh, on that one. So interesting. All right. So if I'm not going there. If I'm not going there, do I dare? (laughs) Here's where I'm torn. Do I dare look at Wyoming and Fresno State? And you might be saying, okay, wait a minute. Why are we talking about that game? Because there is a ton of interest right now in a Wyoming team whose only loss, as I mentioned earlier in the show, uh, is against Texas. Wyoming at home is 4-1. and one. They're playing Fresno State, who's ranked 23rd in the country and undefeated. Very interesting early season game in the Mountain West. Uh, Wyoming, again, the schedule, they beat Texas Tech in the double overtime game at the beginning of the year. The other wins, Mike Grace, are Portland State, Appalachian State, and New Mexico. Not exactly Mm. murderer's row. I get that. No. Cowboys at home at Laramie. You know who's doing this game, brother? I do. I was going to say. Timmy B. Exactly. Tim Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman are on the call. Fox is going to show this all over the country with Fresno undefeated at Wyoming Saturday night. Inch, I, I, am I? Am I? Uh, I don't know. I went against Fresno a couple of weeks ago when they were playing Arizona State. I took Arizona State as the home dog, and Fresno annihilated them and shut them out. I now get a touchdown. I get six points. Do you want to warn me off again about Wyoming hosting Fresno State? I'm just telling you what Timmy B told us. Okay, he spent a full hour with us on the Tuesday of this week, and we talked about this game and why Fox is sending him and Spencer Tillman to do the game. He he thinks Fresno State is the proverbial fly in the ointment. His exact words, he called them this year's Tulane team. He believes in those West Coast Bulldogs, and that would scare me off of those Cowboys, man. Uh, and and I loved his social media post, if you haven't seen it, because he's got the fly, the actual toy yes. rubber fly that has <laughs> the initials F. I O fly in the ointment and he's holding it up while he was talking about this game. Yes, I love the Fresno video. State. Yeah. So, the, so Fresno state could be the fly in the ointment. So uh, we got to be careful about Wyoming again, suspect competition. Uh, Mikey Keene, the quarterback for Fresno state, the Bulldogs again did win at Arizona state who turns out to be bad, but uh, uh, they, they have a win at Purdue to begin the year as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Jeff Tedford has got them going along. 
uh, out west in the Mountain West. So we'll see about Fresno and Wyoming. Again, Mike is saying, eh, I'm not mm-hmm. sure on any of the- All right, so I have one. I have one more that I want to run by you. I've gone two officially. I have one more that I want to run by you uh, on Three Dog Thursday, and that is a Pac-12 game. The Pac-12 has been good to me. In particular, Washington State has been good to me. Washington State has covered, has won the game outright twice for me against Wisconsin on Three Dog Thursday, against Oregon State. Now we got Wazoo at the Rose Bowl at UCLA. This is a game at noon Pacific time, 3 Eastern time. The uh, the Bruins off to a decent start at three and one are favored by a field goal in this one. Cam Ward has been excellent as the quarterback at Washington State. Mike, I just don't know about them as the road doggy here. I like them better in the Palouse. UCLA again uh, with Chip Kelly early on uh, in this season. So much expectation, obviously, around USC. Colorado's got a lot of the attention. Uh, this uh, UCLA team has had the week off after their loss to Utah. Yeah. Two weeks to prepare. Is this another Mike Grace neon sign stay away from Washington I, State and only the field goal? I don't feel good about them going on the road to a UCLA team that's rested, that's a little bit healthier, that's had two weeks to prepare for this team, and then has a, a Chip Kelly, a, a pretty good coach, running the show there. So, no, I, I don't. It's another one that I don't like. I'm sorry. Again, gotta- they had they had trouble with the offense. Dante Moore, the quarterback, uh, really struggled against Utah. Some of that's Utah's defense. They've had the extra week to prepare. Let's see. Let's see what Washington State has. They're off to a great start at 4-0. And remember, Washington State and Oregon State, as everybody knows, they're the two left behind in the Pac-12. How wild will it be if one of them ends up in that Pac-12 title game with a chance to maybe win it, and Washington State already has the head-to-head win over Oregon State? We will see. You know what I'm going to do on $3 Thursday? I'm going to back up. I will go ahead and take the Louisville Cardinals against Notre Dame to maybe win that game outright. So I am leaning bluegrass all the way here with Kentucky on the road, not necessarily to win, and also Louisville. So by means of recap, Mike Grace, here's where I'm going for Three Dog Thursday. Red River rivalry game, give me Oklahoma early. Uh, I like the Sooners getting the touchdown against Texas. Revenge mode for the reasons we laid out. I like Give it. me also Kentucky and the reasons we talked about to keep it close with Georgia, getting yes. over two touchdowns, getting 14 and a half. And now I'll go Louisville as well. Louisville, the lesser of the three, uh, risky as far as I'm concerned, of the uh, of the other underdogs between Wyoming and Washington State out west. So those will be my three underdogs for this week for Three Dog Thursday purposes. Give me Sooners. Give me Kentucky. Uh, Big Blue Nation, give me the Ville. Give, and I'm going two in the state of Kentucky before it is all said and done. All right, uh, before we are done, plug away again on the press box. They can find you on social media at Mike Grace Live, but plug the press box because if you're a college football fan watching us or hearing us on Three Dog Thursday, they got to be plugged into your show 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern time every day, five days a week. Tell them more. Indeed. Uh, and, and look, I'm just the quarterback. I'm the host. The guys that I've got, I've got a former Mississippi State basketball player in Bart Heitch, a former Alabama offensive lineman, a four-year starter, two-time All-ACC center in Roger Schultz. we got your pal Jason Powers from down in Florida. I've got Mike Moat from the Florida Gator Sports Network, Brad Law from the Auburn Sports Network, uh, Colin Lacey from Georgia, uh, Georgia Southern and Westwood One. All these guys come in with me. And then the guest list, I'm not the expert, but guess who we talked to? Tim Brando for a full hour. Brad Nessler. There's so yep. many other Gary Danielson, those type of guys that are in with us all the time. Chris Stewart, our friend, the voice of the Crimson Tide. He'll be with us tomorrow along with Chris Gordy, who hosts the Locked On SEC podcast. Press Box Radio 1 on social media. So that's Press Box Radio and the number one. And not only 8 to 10 Eastern time, but it streams 24-7 at PressBoxRadio.com. Find the website, find the listen button, and you can join us anytime inside the Press Box. If you are a college football fan, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern time, adjust your time zone on demand anytime as he's talking about it, PressBoxRadio.com. It is the Press Box with Mike Grace and his guests. So again, I I love uh, the banter back and forth. Very fascinating week in college football, including that big time again in the case 
of uh, of Texas and Oklahoma, such a hated rivalry, and somebody gets the leg up right now in the final year in the Big 12 and trying to get into the college football playoff, if that's the case. Does Georgia struggle with Kentucky or not? Alabama has a loss. High wire act. If Texas yeah. A&M were to beat them, you know this, Mike, that's basically curtains for the college football playoff. High wire act for the Tide the rest of the year, one more time, as a quick comment. Again, the West is going to be wide open, guys. I, I, and it, 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 it's, it's still, I mean... I, can I ask you about one more before we finish? Yes, please. Talk to me about Missouri and LSU. Oh, we didn't even cover that one on Three Dog Thursday. As an honorable mention, uh, LSU off the heartbreaking, almost arena football-like game with, did I see 1,300 yards of offense? The Ole Miss LSU game you, had you 1,300 you, yards of offense. You yeah, yeah. LSU surrendered 700 yeah. plus total yards. You I don't, I don't that. know that Missouri does that to them, but again, Missouri no. in this instance is, is uh, I'm looking, I'm double checking on the line, a yes. home dog of like a touchdown again. We got several of these games that are six or six and a half points. That's what Missouri is here. Um, I, I, ooh, I don't know. Missouri Missouri had trouble uh, with the last second win over Kansas State. They had some trouble for a while with my Memphis Tigers in Kansas that neutral State's field good, game man. in St. Louis. I, I think Kansas State's good. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know about uh, this matchup, Mizzou and LSU. Is LSU still got a hangover from what happened in Oxford on the road for a second straight week at Columbia? Again, That's with a, a second loss, they're done for the playoff. They're, that they're is done. a fascinating game as well. Man, what a week in the SEC, uh, including unbeaten Kentucky against unbeaten Georgia uh, also in these different matches. You bring up a great point, though, on that one. Maybe it's Mizzou as the home doggy. I'm, Lots I'm, I'm, of home doggy possibilities, including I'm, the one I like, Louisville. I'm going to take and the what, seven uh, and the, uh, the Como Tigers as opposed to the uh, Bayou Bengals. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's an early game again. It's an 11 a.m. local time start in Columbia on the body clocks for LSU and for, for Missouri. Do they catch them a little flat-footed because it's an early start? We will find out. This man knows all about early starts. Again, it's the Press Box, PressBoxRadio.com. Uh, Mike Grace, thank you for hanging with me on Three Dog Thursday, my friend. I appreciate Pleasure. you being my conscience while I try to navigate through the underdogs. I can't wait to see how we do next yes. week, man. So we we're going to find out. We're going to find <laughs> out again. I'm going Boomer Sooner. I'm going Big Blue Nation. I'm going Louisville Cardinals for the three underdogs this week. Again, keep it locked in on winningcureseverything.com, the Winning Cures platforms, as well as the Three Dog Thursday audio podcast, wherever you get podcasts. For Mike Grace, I'm merely TJ Reeves. Wolf, wolf on Three Dog Thursday. <laughs> 